Hello, Philip and Jane Mountrose here, hosts of the Soulful Living Show, uh, broadcast each week. Today, we are focusing on transcendence, remembering who you really are. Good idea here. Remember, we offer a practical strategy every week. We are the founders of IAHP, the International Association of Holistic Practitioners, and um, the founders of... Um, Awakenings Institute, and we share a strategy you can use every week today, transcendence, remembering who you really are. Jane? Right. So the strategy is remember who you really are, <laughs> which is, it's interesting. It sounds so simple, but it's really profound. And it, I think it's the essence of the spiritual journey, because if you look at, well, if you kind of look at where we are right now, Spring is a time of new beginnings, which is perfect for, for transcendence. And here we are, Easter. It's a, a holiday that celebrates the resurrection of Christ from the dead. And of course, I don't think any of us are, are expecting to be resurrected from the dead. But transcendence actually is like a death and rebirth because we have to in a way die to the limited person we believe we are, which is actually an illusion, <laughs> a, a very limiting illusion of who we are and be reborn to viewing ourselves as magnificent spiritual beings who are here with a purpose and something special to offer. So it's a wonderful, it's a wonderful season for it actually going into spring and summer. And it's a topic for anyone who's interested in spiritual development to to focus on and to recognize the heart of it because once we get to the heart of it it makes it much more direct and simple right so it's an interesting idea to think of transcendence and in a way we all came here from a greater place a immaterial place and then we wanted an experience here to find out and explore different things to learn and to grow and to heal. And yet when we get into that transcendent place, everything makes sense, everything comes together and we can do what uh, Abraham Maslow, the famous uh, developmental psychologist in the 1950s said was self-actualizing and self-transcending. And you wanna get to a certain point of recognizing your situation, beginning to understand what's confronting you. And as you do that, then that will be a leverage point for uh, transcending. Uh, an example, a lady I was helping in Ireland, she had a situation, I think it's common to many people procrastinating and she wanted actually to take our, our spiritual kinesiology course. She actually invested in it, but couldn't get started in it. So this is a common variation on a theme, something she wants to do, something I want to do, but for some reason I don't do it. You know, what's going on? And it's a pattern, right? Mm -hmm. So we want to transcend that to remember who we really are, the theme of the show. Right. So as I helped her, it became um, just seeing more clearly her inner critic her mother said, you have to be perfect. You, you don't, don't do things because you might fail. You know, this is, you know, at an eight-year-old level. But on a, on a more transcendent level, it's a more probably uh, soul theme from who knows how many lifetimes. Right. And um, even though she sort of dimly knew that, she didn't understand, quote, why she couldn't go forward in why she procrastinated and something she really wanted to do and she enjoyed. And if, for instance, taking our spiritual kinesiology course, learning about soul and healing, actually <laughs> right. learning about the healing would help her in this very issue. So as it became more evident that her inner critic housed in her childhood consciousness was running the show, then it became a choice every day. So I can unconsciously let my inner child, my six-year-old critic, and sort of maybe a little older, tell me what to do or not to do. In other words, don't do anything because I'm not perfect and I'm going to fail. Or connect with your soul. And we'll talk more about that today. Go to the mountaintop and such. And go from there 
and run your life and operate your life from that level. And it's a choice day to day, moment to moment. And you're not always going to succeed. Of course, you're going to lapse, but uh, that's, that's the transcendence journey. <laughs> right, right. It's certainly a big part of it. And I think in, in looking at that, what we want to do is raise ourselves from a place, Philip mentioned the mountaintop, from what we call in the mud, which is essentially a 3D reality, which is dominated by fear and stress and uh, confusion <laughs> and limitation and a sense of separation, being separated and alone in some, in some respects, to more like rising up, becoming lighter and rising up to a lofty mar mountaintop one of those places with that with a panoramic 360 degree view where you can see the whole world and out before you and it's just the most magnificent thing it gives you that sense of oneness and and a really a sense of connectedness and even love you know love is that state of connectedness just feeling that beauty the magnificence of of everything um and I think it's important to understand that because when we're in the mud and we look at getting out and Philip mentioned, look, you know, exploring what is actually holding us in the mud. A lot of times people resist doing that, you know, finding out what's beneath the surface because they're afraid they're going to find something bad. <laughs> and that's, that's also because we're, we kind of are, tilted in the direction of believing that there's something wrong with us. You know, we're flawed or undeserving or unworthy or however we define it in our own minds. That part of the self, what we need to understand is that part of the self is the illusion, the illusion of limitation. And the truth is what we see on the mountaintop, the magnificence. And it's important, I think, to me, it's important because we have to understand the parts of ourselves that end up wallowing in the mud that feel fearful and, and anxious and stressed and angry, all of the different things that can come to us. Um, they're, they've become separate from the light of the soul. They don't have the light of the soul to guide them, which is why they have a problem. And so from that perspective, what Philip said about healing, that's a real essence, you know, a really essential part of it. And another essential part is connecting with the light, with the soul. We have that, we have that connection and we can do that to get the truth. That's where the truth is. It's on the mountaintop. One time, I had a I had a dream, and it was an it was an interesting one. I think once I probably many of us have dreams we would consider to be iconic, maybe. And so I was in this dream. The first thing is I had a choice between taking the highway. It's kind of like the way that most people were taking to get where I was going, or I could take the the road less traveled. And so I chose the road less traveled and started following, and it went up this. Um, icy slope. So I was trying to get up this icy slope <laughs> and it was, it turned out to be the slippery slope. I kept, I kept sliding back down and I noticed there were people around. They were, they were throwing snowballs and playing and enjoying themselves, but not really trying to get over the mountain. Um, and I was de determined. So I kept trying and then I realized that I was carrying a backpack and so I, I took it off and I thought, well, I don't even know what all these burdens are that I'm carrying. And what I saw when I looked inside of it was um, that it was full of rocks and like worms and, you know, things that I didn't need anymore. So I, I took it off and I left it where it was. And then I was able to easily move up the whole mountain and I got to the top and on the other side, there was this beautiful valley this magnificent valley that I was able to get to when I let go of all of the burdens, the imagine, their imaginary burdens in some ways that I was holding on to so that I could be light enough to rise to the top. And that, that really made sense to me 
about what we're doing is we're wanting to let go of those burdens. But a lot of times to be able to do that successfully, we have to understand what they are, <laughs> like Philip said. Right. You know, so we're continually um, moment to moment in this reality where we can get lost in it, lose ourselves, uh, get sort of mired in the mud, as we say, in our problems. Or we can sort of step back and say, how can I understand and recognize and begin to accept uh, what's going on in my life so I can okay, transcend that. I can rise to the mountaintop as we're going to go through this little process in a moment. Um, so that's that's the opportunity from moment to moment. And we have to kind of accept where we are and stop resisting, which is a big challenge and realize that we have a we may have crossed this to bear. We may have come into this life kind of like Jesus, where we may not have had sort of the extremes that he had, or maybe we have. Uh, but that's something to learn from and grow from. And that's our role in a way, what we chose to, to experience here, you know, and to enjoy it. And when you read about people who've had say near death experience, there's a very good book called After by Bruce Grayson, who recounts many people's near death experiences. People who are kind of mired in the mud in their life have a near death experience sometimes because they've sort of lost track of themselves. And when they get to the other side, they see things from such a, a glorious transcendent place that their life is forever changed. And even though when on the other side after death, we are there and come here in sort of this more earthly realm to experience things, when we're on the other side, things are much lighter and clearer and ethereal and, and loving and unified and then we can go back into this seemingly uh, veil of tears and suffering uh, to live more fully and appreciate it and realize there's something here to learn and grow and love and help ourselves and others in the process. And that's where transcendence occurs. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. And it is, I think it's important to realize that when we're, when we face challenges, they're there for us to learn and grow. So it's not like, we're victims of these things that are happening to us. Actually, we're powerful creators. And what we're learning to do is actually embody that. And, and we can do that by facing challenges willingly and mm -hmm. enthusiastically and not looking at what our first responses might be, which is like, oh, this is horrible. <laughs> not look at that, look at, hmm, this is interesting and just kind of follow it through. Actually, I, I like to follow challenges through with the assumption that things are going to come out better than I ever imagined they possibly could. And mm -hmm. they do. <laughs> so it is, it is partly, there are many aspects to it, but part of it is really claiming the truth of who we are. Right. If we are spiritual beings having this human experience and I, I've been involved in, in a kind of manifestation group the last few months and have been seeing things from their point of view. And something that's sort of missing for a lot of people who want to manifest is if you want to manifest, but you don't know why you've created the limitation you've had, you might be missing an essential piece. So if you want more abundance, say, like some of the people in the group and you want, I want to be more abundant, I want to be more abundant, that's wonderful. And you deserve abundance and there is tremendous abundance. But if you don't know what is in the way of you stopping from creating abundance, it's hard to just in the next moment be free of that and quote, transcend it. And that's where going back to Maslow, those basic human needs of security and safety and belonging, if you've are somehow blocked in those areas, you may have to recognize that, understand that, and do some acceptance so you can get to that next level of transcendence. Mm -hmm. All right. Did you want to share the mud to mountaintop a little more with them? Yeah. Just, so there's a mud I think to mountain. This is also <laughs> part of the goal of this show is to offer you things that are practical that you can use not just to offer theoretical spiritual ideas mm -hmm. about life <laughs> because soulful living really is about living from that soulful place and mm -hmm. 
and uh, allowing life to move forward in a, a whole new way, that, which is right. what transcendence is about. Yeah, so we want to offer our mud to mountain tap uh, process in this what will be a shorter soulful living show today. And that comes from our Awaken to the Power of Your Soul, a new program with our new uh, manual, training manual book and webinars, which uh, I'll put a, a link in the show, but it's uh, it's a, uh, I'll, I'll give you the link in a moment, tinyurl.com awaken dash. Uh, forward slash. Forward slash awaken dash power dash of dash your dash soul, if I've got that right. Uh, yeah, so that's, uh, no, excuse me, tinyurl.com slash power dash of dash your soul is the uh, your program, soul. the new program. Right. Yeah. And so in that is this uh, process I'm about to share with you, the mount, mud, the mountaintop. So if you imagine when you're mired in the mud, you have a problem, you have a pain, you're procrastinating like that story I told you. Uh, you're fearful, you're doubtful, you're stressed, whatever. You're in the mud. <laughs> and when you're in the mud, you can take a moment to say, even though I'm in the mud, I can raise my vibration. I can sense or imagine lifting to a wonderful summit, a mountaintop. Many ways to get to the mountaintop. You can instantly go there. You can arrive there, however you sense or feel or see it. And as you arrive to this mountaintop, there's wonderful vistas, panoramic views, fresh air, wonderful nature sounds. You can see as far as you can. And you get that internal sense that you are now connected with everything and everyone. You are a part of everything and everyone. And at the mountaintop, you are just there. You transcend everything. And you see your life as a journey that got you to the mountaintop and will take you to other mountaintops in the future, in time and out of time. Knowing that you have wonderful possibilities to help yourself and others in this lifetime and going forward and beyond. And just enjoy that possibility from your mud to your mountaintop. Jane, do you want to add anything to that? Yeah, it is. If you want to experience it as soulful, it is soulful because when you're in a in a loving, happy kind of a connectedness type of a space then you are connected with your soul and from the at the mountaintop you can also just be breathing energy into your heart and allow love to radiate out through through your body and all around you which is a very soulful way to approach it and from there you can just ask well from this perspective how does life look and you can see all those people down in the mud and how do they look does that look like it's necessary and, and you can feel you know, compassion can, for the people in the mud, knowing well, course, that sometimes we're right. all there ourselves. Right. But you can feel the truth of who you are when you're in that place. So the goal is to be in that place more often. <laughs> mm -hmm. And you can do that visualization from going from the mud to the mountaintop. You can stop whatever you're doing if you find yourself in a momentum that isn't really productive and just breathe love into your heart. And when you feel that love, just notice that you you have different perceptions of things. And what it is, is that is a more resourceful place to be. So that's where you want to be to make decisions and also to evaluate things. When you're connected with that truth in your heart, you understand that you're more than just this physical body. And you understand that's more than more is possible than you can see when you're down in the mud. When you're on the mountaintop, you can see a lot more. Everything is laid out before you. Right. So it really is connecting with the beauty of it and understanding that being in the mud is the illusion. And all of us, all of us are subject to the illusion. <laughs> it's getting out of the illusion. That's why we're here. 
So we don't need to be hard on ourselves for being in the mud. And we don't need to feel that there's anything wrong with us because the mud is the illusion. And all of us have some form of the illusion about ourselves, which is the deepest part of, as I mentioned before, being flawed, inadequate, undeserving, something like that. Like there's something wrong with me. I'm not good enough. I'm <laughs> whatever it is. There's nothing wrong with you. It's just a matter of, of being in a resourceful place where you can bring out the best in yourself, in yourself and other people that they, they kind of go together. So, so transcendence is a wonderful opportunity and it's a journey. That's a beautiful journey. Mm -hmm. Right, right. It is a journey from the mud to the mountain temp. <laughs> right. And not getting stuck on the slip, slippery slope. <laughs> Transcendence. <laughs> yeah, and we often are in a f stage of sometimes forgetting, forgetting who we are. Right. We were in a Gurdjieff Espensky group, Jane and I, where we met many years ago. And one of their key uh, principles, which was very wonderful, is called remembering yourself, remembering that you're connected with the universe, God, oneness. And as we forget ourselves, we are in a sleeping state. Sometimes it's called like uh, forgetting um, the, the bigger picture, the truer reality, the, the reality of which we are a part that we are sort of generating, but have forgotten. Like the, the Plato in the, in the cave where all the people are sort of stuck in the cave seeing shadows on the walls and not seeing this the sunlight and what's out there. So anything else, Jane? Um, well, just as just as a note, some of the wonderful things that happen as you follow this journey, um, and you're probably <laughs> on the journey or you wouldn't be listening, um, is this is where you discover your life's purpose and mission. Mm -hmm. And you can understand more about the plan your soul had for you when you were born. Mm -hmm. Because it's all, this is what's playing out. It's not, and it's not like we don't have any choices. And there are different plans <laughs> for different choices. Um, but it is, then it becomes, that's magical to have a purpose and a mission and, and to feel like you make a difference, that you're doing something special in the world that nobody else could do. I think that that's a, a really wonderful it feels good in your heart. <laughs> Wonderful thing. Our uh, previous book a couple of years ago was called The Ultimate Paradigm Shift, and that was Becoming a Creator of Your Life. And the subtitle was Living the Life You Were Born to Live. And there are a lot of lives you were born to live, and they are all soul embodied following your life plan, which there are many ways to, uh, to get there. Uh, but once you um, become a creator of your life, you do live in a more transcendent place where you're more on the mountaintop where you can make these uh, uh, soulful decisions and guided by your soul in your higher desires and purpose and mission um, to live the life that you were born to live. And there are many ways to do that. Mm -hmm. And this boy, Buddy, he was born to be part of the <laughs> part yeah. of our show. So our he, dog, Buddy Watchman. To, yeah. Yep, our little buddy. Yep. Um, and I think another part of it is, is if you can understand that everything is happening for a reason, it's also important not to ever give up, you know, to embrace whatever's happening and be in the flow with it. And then just take your next step because it's, right. it's magical, you know, and that's, that's right. also where miracles come in. So it is, it's a wonderful journey. As William Wordsworth, a couple hundred years ago, the poet said an ode to intimations of immortality, we're here in trailing clouds of glory, do we come? And we can reconnect with those trails of glory, those clouds of glory, as we uh, get to the mountaintop, we can see the higher clouds, the higher vision. Right, yeah. So anything else, Jane, before we conclude here for no, just, Soulful Living this week? Just happy holiday for everyone who's celebrating Easter and, and wishing certainly a, a magical journey for everybody. 
So this was Philip and Jane Mountrose, uh, Soulful Living Show, this time Transcendence, Remembering Who You Are. Uh, please share the show with other people if you enjoyed it. It can help you and others. Our website is gettingthrough.org slash holistic, uh, where we have a lot of uh, programs, downloads, free materials, our new it's program. thru.org, getting thru.org. Getting thru.org, our new program, uh, Awakening to the Power of Your Soul, our new training manual book with webinar training is, uh, you can find that at tinyurl.com slash power dash of dash your soul, tinyurl.com slash power dash your dash soul of dash your soul. And that's something you might want to check out too. So uh, remember, we can all make a big difference if we keep this course going, we keep awakening, we keep manifesting, we keep transcending. Until next time, have a wonderful week. Bye, everybody.